After conquering the Battle Frontier, Ash makes his way to Sinnoh, where he is robbed of a championship win. So to try and give him another chance, I've modded this version of Pokemon Platinum to walk around as Ash and mimic parts of his Sinnoh journey. Using the same Pokemon he did for every major battle, let's see if I have what it takes to win when Ash could not. Before we begin, let me know which of Ash's Sinnoh Pokemon is your favorite. Mine has got to be Infernape. This game starts with Paul, Ash's real rival, not that Barry kid, breaking into my house. You'll notice that the text here has changed a bit to reflect Paul's jerkness. I wanted to keep this going throughout the entire video, but it was taking an awful lot of work. I do pick up this light ball, which is a bit of a waste since following Ash's maiden voyage, Team Rocket steals his Pikachu. For real this time. But fear not, Ash didn't leave all of his Pokemon behind. He still has an Apom, who, for a second, looks like a Turtwig. There isn't a rival fight in the anime here, but I might as well show off these sprites and let the two monkeys wail on one another. After two degrees of separation, Ash catches his very first Sinnoh Pokemon, Starly. Meanwhile, Pikachu meets up with Dawn and, you guessed it, destroys her bike. My bike! It's extra crispy! It wouldn't be a new Pokemon region without some vehicular destruction. Those two worlds collide as Ash gets his Pikachu back and Dawn decides to join the group. Shortly after, Ash and Paul have their first official battle. Their fight ends in a tie, but mine certainly won't. Pikachu one-shots the Starly that Paul decided to keep, and my Starly takes out his Chimchar, but then I apparently made a mistake here because Paul's Elekid only knows Struggle, which is actually a decently strong move at this point in the game, especially with a crit. Even though this isn't a Nuzlocke, I don't want to needlessly let my Pokemon faint, so out comes Pika as Elekid struggles himself to death. Works for me. It's at this point that Ash learns about the gym in Ouroburg City, so let's get Twiggy with it and head right there. On the way, Ash encounters and catches a Turtwig. There is some Jubilife stuff, including a contest, but Dawn loses anyway, so who cares about that? Ash gets to the Ouroburg gym just in time to see the shape of things to come as Paul battles against Rourke, eventually winning his first Sinnoh badge. But that proves to be a gruff act to follow as Ash loses his first Sinnoh gym battle. Pikachu's unable to battle. Onyx is the winner and so victory goes to Rourke the gym leader. Before the rematch, not that it's any help to me, a Staravia is born. And since Pikachu mastered Iron Tail back in Hoenn, I give myself that TM. Rourke's anime team is similar to the default team in Platinum with one major exception. First, his Geodude falls to a single Razor Leaf from Turtwig, and Onyx takes just a couple of hits. Now, it's the Rampardos we watched for. I swap to Pikachu on a Headbutt, responding with a Light Ball Iron Tail for the knockout. That was so easy, I don't know how Ash lost the first time, since Kranidos hadn't even evolved yet. Sometime later, after saving the Valley Windworks, which doesn't even show up in the anime for another 100 plus episodes, Ash and friends are enchanted by the sweet Cheryl, who temporarily joins the group. She is in search for some honey, which is apparently a rare commodity in the Pokemon world, which actually makes sense. I mean, if there were things like this guarding honey, we'd probably leave them alone too. After getting some of that precious ambrosia, Cheryl drops us like a hot potato. Searching for new ways to show our treasured love to the world! Look, a Beedrill! My grandfather always said, if you see a Beedrill, that means you have to travel alone! Goodbye, everyone, and take good care! I guess that's all we were good for. But this channel is also good at making Pokemon Challenge videos. So leave a comment, a like, and subscribe for videos on Ash's Pokemon journey, and more. Ash naively thinks that the grass is greener on the other side of Eterna Forest, and he proceeds to lose to Gardenia. This kid is not off to a great start in the Sinnoh League. Number one, I win! It's almost as if the writers are trying to set him up for failure in the cheapest way possible at the end of the season, but I'm sure they would never do that. After an Elite Four meet and greet, where Don absurdly thinks she can defeat Lucian, the grass menagerie that is Gardenia returns but this time Ash is ready. Our two Turtwigs face off and hers uses Reflect, so it takes some time. I do manage to get several curses, so that's always nice. Next is her Roserade, but with that plus two attack, the Turt stays in, avoids two Stun Spores because he's just that fast, 
and ends up getting a crit bite, defeating the Rose. Last is Cherubi, but after a bite, I decide to let Staravia come on out. I didn't want to lead with this bird, because he would totally have swept her entire team. I even gave Staravia pluck to steal Roserade's berry. The Grass Turtle tries to evolve, and it pains me to not allow him, because he did such a great job. But it's much too early for that. He's going to have to wait for quite a while. After some top-down training, Paul challenges Cynthia to a battle, only to lose magnificently. I guess that's it. Guess so. Now that's what I'm talking about. It's around this time that Ash's real rival, Gary Oak, makes a temporary comeback. He is trying to prevent Jay from ill will hunting some shield on, which is a bit weird because I thought these guys were all extinct, but whatevs. At this point, Ash and the gang get roped into finding an underwater Sandshrew's locker and get conveniently teleported directly to Hearthome City. I, on the other hand, have to walk all the way there, meeting Cyrus for the first time. Unfortunately, after all of my walking, the Hearth Home Gin Leader is nowhere to be found, so the third badge is going to have to wait. Instead, we do a tag battle competition, which is basically like a contest. I haven't done a Gen 4 contest in well over a decade, so I completely forgot about the dance competition. Regardless, I ace this contest with flying colors coming in second to last. The tag battle competition is actually a two-on-two -two where Ash is teamed up with Paul. So in the interest of team spirit, let's have a battle outside of Hearthhome. Paul has his Torterra, which is pretty tough, but all he does is curse, allowing Staravia to pluck. His Electabuzz runs away from my Turtwig in place of Chimchar, and my Pikachu paralyzes the monkey, but falls to a few flame wheels. Staravia takes out the Chimp, and then endeavors on Electabuzz before also falling. My last Pokemon, Turtwig, manages to clinch this victory, but we almost had our first loss. In between tag battles, Paul gets rid of his Chimchar, but Ash has a thing for secondhand Pokemon, and he adopts him. So now, I have a level 27 Fire Chimp. Don't worry though, he will evolve, eventually. Not wanting to have two monkey Pokemon, Ash keeps the newest one and throws the switch to trade away his Apom, getting a Buizel from Dawn in the process. And I kid you not, in the very next episode, Dawn's shiny new Apom evolves. So basically, Ash did all of that work and she gets the two-tailed monkey boy. Not that it matters, because Dawn still sucks. And when she finally realizes that undeniable fact, she gets depressed. I do know a trainer shouldn't act the way I've been acting. Huh? Oops. The winds of change will come, but first, Ash meets up with Paul again. Not to battle this time, just to hang out. You know, like arch nemesis is normally do. But more importantly, I get a Gligar. In Veilstone, Paul's brother Reggie gives us his entire backstory. Ugh, nobody asked, man. Apparently, Maylene is also suffering from the big sad. I'm not going back to the gym! The weakest leader I ever fought, and this lightweight badge is just like you. And as everyone knows, the best way to cure depression is to group all of the depressed people together. So Dawn crosses the battle line, having her very first gym battle. In spite of losing spectacularly, Dawn's sadness is magically cured, and Maylene obviously feels good after winning. So let's put her back in her place with a triple fighting battle. Staravia aerial aces the Metatite easily enough, and thanks to Reggie, he has mastered Brave Bird to one-shot Machoke. I swapped a Buizel on Lucario to do basically no damage at all, but his death means that Staravia's Intimidate can be reused. I had hoped Staravia would outspeed, and he does for the first hit, but never gets a chance to Brave Bird. So the battle all depends on Chimchar. A single Bone Rush could mean the end, but Lucario instead Drain Punches and Force Palms, allowing tiny little Chimchar to actually win. Well, that was surprising. The anime battle ends in a tie, but I guess I'm just better than Anime Ash. Though we've seen them a number of times in the game, this is where Team Galactic enters the anime, doing their dastardly bad guy things. Sometime later, Pikachu fights the Goliath that is a Raichu. After losing, quite horribly, to this mature rat, Ash pulls out the Thunderstone he got like three regions ago that he's been carrying around in his pocket this entire time. I guess he still secretly wanted Pika to evolve. Pikachu refuses to grow up, a la Peter Pan, and just like the Lieutenant Surge battle, Pika wins the rematch against this Raichu. But how crazy would it have been if Pikachu decided to evolve in the middle of Sinnoh? 
That would ruin all of Pokemon's marketing. So I guess the reason Ash never gets a Raichu is because of capitalism. Who knew? Dawn enters something called the Wallace Cup, but I really don't care. The most interesting thing that happens about these episodes is the temporary reappearance of May, Ash's previous traveling companion. She has some new Pokemon, but her strategy with a smile fails, and she loses to Dawn of all people. Well, that's pretty embarrassing. At this point, Paul tries to catch a Drapion, but my Gligar rudely interrupts him. So we have a battle instead. Now you might think that Paul's Gliscor would have an advantage over my Gligar, but I have a freaking Swords Dance. Technically Gliscor does too, but I'm smarter than Paul. Sometimes. And I get a lucky crit, winning with a single HP left. He falls to the Ursaring, but thanks to Blaze, my Chimchard Monkey Flame Wheels the Bear. This battle was supposed to be a 3v3, but Chimchar goes a bit Blaze crazy, ending the fight early, and attacking Ash just a tad. For the Crasher course, my electrically powered rat Thunderbolts Gyarados, baiting out Quagsire for my Turtwig. He mastered Energy Ball some episodes ago, so easy enough. I do need to swap to Buizel to avoid falling asleep though. Buizel is crunch crit by his kin and immediately falls. Turtwig tanks an Ice Fang thanks to a Yacha Berry, but is flinched and also falls. So this is not going great. Pikachu obviously doesn't outspeed, but against all odds, he survives the hit and thanks to Light Ball, one shots the Water Weasel. A lot of these battles recently are getting down to a single Pokemon. Using these unevolved losers is really starting to take its toll. As if he heard me, Ash decides to use a Razor Fang to evolve his Gligar. About time too. Now I can fight fear with fear. Arriving in style to Hearth Home City, I eventually do find Fantina. However, their first anime fight ends with Ash forfeiting and leaving Hearth Home in disgrace, instead heading towards Celestic Town. There's not much I can do if Chimchar and Pikachu are both sleeping. Since I don't actually have the badge I need for Defog, I cannot level the playing field here. But it's fine, I could play this game blindfolded. I know it so well. Oh, there's a wall there. Who knew? In Celestic Town, we have some more encounters with Team Galactic, but the more I learn about them, the more they lose their lustrous, mysterious air, instead becoming a bunch of Team Rocket knockoffs. Speaking of losers, the child that is Eren of the Elite Four thinks he has what it takes to beat the champion level trainer that is Cynthia. That doesn't end up going so well for him. Ash similarly loses a battle against Paul, though his Turtwig evolves in the process, becoming much too slow. I return to Hearth Home yet again in search of Fantina, and instead find Barry. From this point on in the show, Barry becomes a minor rival to Ash, but never rises to the level of Paul. Anyway, it's time for me to finally face Fantina. Pikachu leads the charge to Thunderbolt the Driftblim. However, he is outsped and falls to Gengar's Shadow Ball. Same for Buizel and Chimchar too. For how long I've been waiting for this Fantina fight, that was mighty anticlimactic it's time for a slight change in plans. This time, Pikachu starts with a light screen to decrease special damage. Driftblim is still easily defeated, but now Pikachu can survive a Shadow Ball with 5 HP. The only problem is, Gengar also survives the Thunderbolt. She heals, survives another bolt, and takes out Pikachu. Buizel then Aqua Jets Gengar for the knockout. I swap to Chimchar on Miss Magius' Magical Leaf, but he never gets a chance to attack. A Choice Spec Surf from Weasel does a decent amount, and he does survive a single Magical Leaf, but then he falls, and I lose yet again. But third time's the charm, right? This time, I get a bit more experience, so Pikachu levels up after defeating Driftblim. I'm hoping that tiny extra special attack will let Pika one-shot the Gengar. And it's a crit. That works too. Unfortunately, Miss Magius is too fast, and Pika doesn't survive. Chimchar manages to hit two flame wheels, thanks to a person berry, and survives the first shadow ball, but then falls. Buizel also barely survives a shadow ball, but responds with a choice spec surf to finally defeat Fantina. Gengar is much too good of a Pokemon to be defeated with all of my unevolved team members. For the pre-gym battle in Candelave City, Ash has the lofty goal of defeating Paul. And in the Poke Ringer competition, he finally does it. Granted, it's a 1v1 with his now evolved Staraptor, and technically wasn't an actual battle, but I'll take what Ash can get. On Iron Island, Ash saves the world by ruining Team Galactic's plans. 
but I'm just trying to kill time till Byron gets back. When he does, it's time to deal with his defensive types. Chimchar may still be unevolved, but he did learn Flamethrower right at the level cap. So after a nasty plot, one Flamethrower takes out Bronzor. Thankfully, Onyx loses quite a bit of speed upon evolving, not unlike Ash's Turtwig, so Chimchar goes first and one-shots Steelix too. But for Bastiodon, Gliscor takes a Stone Edge on the swap, ensuring victory with a single Earthquake. Now that's more like it, Ash. In Sandalstraw Town, which is an anime exclusive, we meet up with a number of old rivals who I haven't talked about and learn about a freaking ping pong competition. This is what the Pokemon world needs, more ping pong. With no prior experience whatsoever, Ash and friends think they can somehow just waltz right on up and win this competition. Spoiler alert, they all lose miserably. But perhaps the true victory was the ping pong friends they made along the way. Ambipom though, manages to hold his own for a time after Dawn's paddle is shattered. The mysterious ping pong master O was so impressed by this two-tailed monkey that he offers to train him in the ancient art of ping pong. So that means you want to play Pokemon ping pong, right? But that's enough of that, let's head to Snowpoint and slide right into the seventh gym leader battle. For some reason, Ash brings Grodel along, so let's start with him. Sneasel uses Slash and gets a crit, but Grodel curses. Thanks to a Citrus Berry and no more crits, two Razor Leafs defeat Sneasel. This brings out Obama Snow. To avoid an unnecessary death, I swap to Chimchar expecting an Ice move, but he gets Focus Blasted instead. After the hail, he survives with only 4 HP, but that is enough for him to flamethrower next turn, taking out the snowman, and sacrificing himself in the process. Last is Staraptor, who easily takes out Metacham with a single Brave Bird. After the battle, Ash's good friend Brandon, Young man, that evil spirit was attracted to you by your own uncontrolled arrogance. You work on that. Well, they eventually became friends. Anyway, he appears on a mystical flying pyramid, and Paul challenges him to a battle. I'd like to challenge you to a Pokemon battle, right here and now. But his rage quickly builds as Brandon wipes the floor with him. But you allow your emotions to betray you on the battlefield! I guess Paul isn't better at absolutely everything. Just most things. Like when Paul beats Ash in a battle just a few episodes later. But at least Ash's strategies let Chimchar finally evolve. We meet up with Looker and Team Galactic, but before getting to the Gateway of Ruin, Cyrus and I battle. I start with a newly evolved monkey to Flamethrower Sneasel. I pivot to Pikachu on a Crobat's Air Cutter, and even after getting poisoned, my Electric Rat survives with 1 HP left. This lets him Thunderbolt the Honchkrow as well, barely staying alive. We unlock the Red Chain of Events, and free the Lake Spirits from Galactic Control. In the show, Ash and the gang once again get teleported right where they need to go, while I am left trudging up through Mount Coronet till I get to Spear Pillar. After summoning Dialga and Palkia, Cyrus gets sucked into a portal never to be seen again. It's mine! Mine alone! But that didn't sit well with me. I wanted another final legendary battle, so I decide to follow him into the unknown. I'm not sure how his team has improved so much since the last time, but it did. I start with a Choice Specs Weasel, who immediately falls to a Dark Pulse. Well, that wasn't very well planned. In his place, Gliscor Earthquakes Houndoom. Monferno swaps in to take a few Weavile Ice Punches, but still one-shots with a Flamethrower. I leave in this chimp as a sacrifice to deal some damage, letting me bring out my ace, Pikachu, to Thunderbolt Gyarados. Honchkrow is again Thunderbolted, and once again, Pikachu manages to defeat Cyrus with a whopping 1 HP while being poisoned. What are the chances of that? About as good as Cyrus ever getting out of here. Now technically, there are a few episodes where Team Galactic attempts to do just that, we'll soon find Master Cyrus. but obviously they fail. They are no match for my Pikachu with a built-in Focus Sash. Ash does meet Giratina in a movie at one point, and rides on the back of Pokemon Satan. Sometime later, in spite of our good times together, and even though he's kind of my best Pokemon, Ash leaves Gliscor to train with Old Man McCann, some dude he literally just met. This feels an awful lot like the Primeape situation all over again. Having unexpectedly found himself without a ground type, rather than, you know, evolve his Grodel to become one, Ash instead has gotta get a Gibble so he lures an innocent, unsuspecting little guy onto his team. Now this dragon would add some much needed strength if he ever evolved. But nope, 
Garchomp needs to be a Cynthia exclusive Pokemon. Why not? In Sunny Shore City, Volkner refuses to battle because he's too sad. I've completely lost interest in battling. There's a lot of that going on here, isn't there? So Ash and Flint spark the fire in Volkner's heart by having their own Pokemon battle. Ash loses, but wins the chance to actually face Volkner. But first, Monferno and Grodel finally evolve. Monferno technically evolved a few episodes prior in a berry battle, but we don't talk about him here. Mid Volkner battle though, Team Rocket kind of sort of destroyed the gym, so that battle is postponed. Sometime later, it's finally time for the eighth wonder of Sinnoh. How a gym leader who refuses to fight can remain a gym leader. To show off my newly evolved monkey, he choice specs Flamethrower's Volkner's Electivire, but is thunder punched in the process. Luxray also survives the first hit, bringing Infernape down to 2 HP, activating his Blaze ability. Of course, that doesn't help me against Jolteon, who would outspeed and uses Quick Attack anyway. But Torterra can take anything this Jolteon does and one shots with an Earthquake. With the 8th badge in hand, Ash now qualifies for the Lily of the Valley Island Conference in one month. Cue several episodes of filler until then. I'm on a treasure hunt! After several unimportant battles, Ash and Paul finally meet up in the quarterfinals. This battle is quite a rival rouser, spanning three episodes, which still pales in comparison to a certain anime fight in my youth. Anyway, this is a full Pokemon battle, meaning both Paul and Ash can use six Pokemon. Before this fight, Gliscor, unlike other Pokemon who shall remain nameless, actually comes back to Ash to help, so I can use it on my team. And I start with Gliscor to immediately Earthquake Paul's Aggron. This baits out Frostlass, who Infernape one shots with a flamethrower. Torterra takes some damage from Hail and Muddy Water on the swap, but easily Energy Balls Gastrodon. Drapion Toxic spikes, but is also defeated by Torterra. Ninjask does Swords Dance, but Slash is still quite weak, and this bug is eaten in two bites, again, by Torterra. This guy is rocking. Last is Paul's ace, Electivire. In an attempt to recreate the anime, I pivot to Infernape on a light screen. I still use Flamethrower, not wanting to faint from Flare Blitz damage, but with the poison from the toxic spikes, it's just too much for Monkey to handle, and he falls. Instead, Gliscor returns to use one more Earthquake. Now that fight wasn't nearly as close as the anime version, I mean, I only lost one Pokemon, but in the show, it ultimately came down to Infernape versus Electivire. And the thing that I really like about that fight is that Paul only lost because he was so cruel to Chimchar. Without Paul's callousness, Ash would never have gotten his arguably strongest Sinnoh Pokemon. Electivire is unable to battle. Infernape wins, which means the victory goes to Ash of Pallet Town. All right! And that's all she wrote. This just goes to show that you need to treat your Pokemon with respect, because if you don't, your rival is going to take them from you and beat you up with it. Now, throughout the rest of this conference, Ash uses Pokemon from other regions, like his Snorlax, Noctowl, Torkoal, and many more. I had planned on sticking with his Sinnoh team throughout the Elite Four, but you all decided that I should mix things up. Because I don't want to go and catch all of those Pokemon, I made it so that talking to this guy gives you a number of Ash's older Pokemon, including a now evolved Quilava, which is pretty cool, and this other guy gives you the rest. So if you want to use Ash's Pokemon for your Elite Four battles, you have plenty of options to choose from. But I only want the best. So here is my final team. If you've been watching the channel for a while, the Heracross should come as no surprise. He is one of my all-time favorite Pokemon, and certainly the best bug type. And speaking of not as good bugs, let's meet up with Eren. I lead with a pre-burned Gut Swellow with an Expert Belt to Aerial Ace Yon Mega. Dawnfan takes a few Ice Fangs from Drapion, and even with a Soft Sand Earthquake, fails to one-shot. Next turn though, Dawnfan takes him out. I have to sacrifice her, unfortunately, to bring Swallow back out to Aerialay's Heracross. She flies the Vespi Queen, and even with a defense order, takes her right out. Last is Scizor, who has pretty crappy special defense. Pikachu survives an Iron Head on the swap, and would outspeed with a Thunderbolt if it weren't for Quick Attack. Well, that was lame. Oh well. This lets me bring out my Guts Heracross to close combat. In the show, an Eren flashback showed this guy as a sore loser who threw away his Wurmple after losing one too many battles. It's totally your fault! 
He eventually does get it back, so I probably should have given him a Beautifly since it symbolizes the metamorphosis of Eren as a Pokemon trainer, but I'm not that deep. Instead, it's on to Bertha. Ash encountered this lady in a previous episode where she went undercover to defeat Team Rocket. But I don't like to be called one of the Elite Four at all. It's a secret. Yes, ma'am. Ash challenged her to a 1v1 where Torterra lost her Hippowdum. Not really sure how. Having learned from Anime Ash's mistake, I instead leave with Sceptile, who is a tad faster than that turtle. Leaf Blade takes out the Whiskash, and I pivot to my Orange Island Snorlax, who is super fat, to tank Gliscor's Fire Fang. He gets a lucky paralysis on Gliscor and ends up winning that encounter. The dreaded Hippowdon yawns as I swap to Sceptile, but a quick pivot to Heracross and back, followed by a Choice Bex Giga Drain, is more than enough. Actually, Bertha's last two Pokemon, Golem and Rhyperior, similarly get their life forces drained. That was super easy. How did Ash lose to her again? We already talked about Ash's flint loss, so no need to rehash that here. Swellow may not have access to Facade right now, but a Silk Scarf return is still good enough for Houndoom. And Infernape too, actually. Magmortar tries a Thunderbolt that doesn't affect Donphan. What a noob. A Flamethrower does quite a bit, but Earthquake does even more. Donphan even survives a Flare Blitz from Rapidash, responding with another Earthquake. Last is Flareon, but once again, my very fat Snorlax comes in handy, getting a crit body slam too. Now Ash and the gang met Lucian way back near Eterna City, when Dawn challenged him to a battle with Ash's soon-to-be Weasel. She lost, of course, but it's the thought that counts. Unfortunately, Weasel will not get his chance at revenge, since Heracross is a million times better. After Night Slashing Mr. Mime, I do need to swap because Espeon is a bit too fast. Snorlax is Psychic Crit on the swap, but with a bit of rest and sleep talk, he stays plenty healthy. I pivot to Donphan on Gallade to use an Earthquake, and then swap to Sceptile to finish him off. Alakazam is x Scizord, bringing out Bronzong. Snorlax deals a decent amount of damage, but right when he's about to fall, I pivot to Donphan, who just so happens to know Fire Fang beating the last Elite Four member. Up to the quarterfinals of the Lily of the Island Valley Conference, things are going really well for Ash. It looks like he might actually do it, until he faces the epitome that is Deuce Ex Machina, Tobias. The writers really didn't want Ash to win, so what better way to force a loss than bring up some random dude with two incredible legendaries? Hardly seems fair if you ask me. This is probably the worst and least deserved loss Ash suffers in his championship battles. All six of Ash's Pokémon have been eliminated, so moving on to the finals is Tobias the victor! And that's it! It's over! Tobias has defeated Ash and will be moving on to the finals! I didn't want to waste my time and effort making a Tobias sprite, so I just left Cynthia in as the champion, with a few minor changes. Instead of her Spiritomb, I gave her a Darkrai. Of course, a burned Heracross can't fall asleep, which is kind of Darkrai's big thing. That means that Heracross is more than strong enough to tank a Shadow Ball and Brick Break this Nightmare. Well, that wasn't so hard now, was it, Ash? But nope, he chose to lose three Pokémon to that thing. The second Cynthia change is shown next, where I swap Togekiss for a Latios, Tobias's second lame Pokémon, and the only other one we ever saw. I pivot to my special tank Snorlax, who gets his defense lowered, but wins with a lucky crunch crit. Now it's just normal Cynthia Pokémon, like her Lucario. Donphan barely survives two Aura Spheres, but a single Earthquake is all he needs. Snorlax makes a return on Melotic to heal with rest, and Body Slam a bunch of times. Snorlax hits her ace with a single Body Slam, but can't defeat Garchomp. Instead, that honor falls to Swellow with a Silk Scarf Guts boosted return. Man, I love that bird. Cynthia's final Pokemon is Roserade, who never gets a chance to attack. And that just about does it for Ash's Sinnoh journey. After yet another championship loss, Ash returns to Pallet Town to wallow in self-pity. There's Pallet Town. Let's go, Pikachu. before striking out once again for the Unova region. Before you take off, check out the Google Drive link below for instructions on how to play this version of Pokemon Platinum if you're so inclined. I hope to see you in the next region as we continue Ash's journey.